the heart to the hand. I had to get it here first before it affected my heart. But once it affected my heart, it affected my hands. And I started to do what my head told me. And that was to obey the word of God. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's talking about releasing your faith. Yes. And then my hands started doing the service under God. It's all about ministry, y'all. It's all about ministry. It's all about doing service unto God for him and his people. And a woman of faith knows that it's not about her. A woman of faith knows it's not about you. It's not even about any of that. It's about God and building his kingdom. Because God has given you certain talents, and he's given you certain talents. Yes, he's yes, given me yes, certain yes, gifts. Yes, yes. Some of them have gifts of tongues. Others have gifts of inter interpreting the tongue. Right. Some people have other gifts. We all, in, Everybody in here has a gift. That's right. And what you need is to come together with that. Have you ever seen a puzzle that all the sides were the same shape? Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen a puzzle like that? Nope. All the little pieces look the same. Mm -hmm. you, you never will. Because in order for that puzzle to come together, it has to have different shapes and different sizes. And I was sharing with them, I was sharing with some with my Sunday school class the other week that, uh, you know, everybody in the body of Christ is important. Christ looks at everybody. There are no little eyes and no big huge. And there are no, no presidents and, and little folk. And I, and, I, and I showed, I told him that I learned that lesson in another way once. Because I love, as you see, I love to wear open-toed shoes. And, and, and sometimes I don't appreciate all my toes. You know, we have to appreciate what God gives. He gave us all this. And sometimes I don't appreciate all my toes. Because if I'm wearing some open-toed shoes and I'm running late, I'm only going to polish the toes that's going to be showing sure. <laughs> <laughs> through the toe of my shoe. Oh, yes. Now, the baby toe and the little toe next to the baby toe, <laughs> they get neglected. <laughs> <laughs> Why? They ain't up front. <laughs> I got to polish them. Anybody going see them? <laughs> they ain't on stage. Oh, they ain't singing a solo. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got to polish y'all. <laughs> on the big toe and maybe the other toe next to that and half of the other toe that's over next to that. <laughs> but one night that toe is a part of my body but I don't appreciate them. One night in the middle of the night I had to get up and I had to make my way from my bed to the bathroom and, and I've been living in that house a whole bunch of years and I thought I could make it y'all but I was mistaken without turning on the light. And I made my way and I bumped that baby toe on the edge. Oh. Wow. That baby toe let me know yes. that he was an important part of my life. <laughs> when I bumped that toe, every my hand ran down to grab my baby toe. All my feet, I'm serious, all my feet was wrapped around that toe. My leg in the, in the picture. He lifted it up so I was going to get it in the <laughs> If I could have put my toe in my mouth, my mouth would have been sucking on my tongue. <laughs> Every part of my My brain. My brain is not right. to all these other body parts. That's right. The baby toe is in danger. <laughs> he needs to all come to his rescue. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. My mouth said, baby, told my tongues, they got together in concert. They said, you can't holler out. I know your pain. I'm going to holler out for you. Come on. They all got in concert. All of them went to the rescue of my baby toe. That's how it's supposed to be in the body of Christ. Yeah. 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 Everybody run to the rescue of that hurt yeah. 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 That's beautiful. That baby told let me know no longer will you neglect me. No longer will you overlook me. No longer will I allow you to treat me like I'm not a part of this body. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We're all a part of the body. Amen. Amen. And a woman of faith will know that. That's right. She'll go to that child. She'll go to that woman that's sitting in the back. She'll go to him and make him feel a part of the body of Christ. She'll encourage him and edify them. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all go and thank God for I found my husband. <laughs> 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 to be part of that scripture.
scripture, and we hurry on. The B part of that scripture said that, that, that it's impossible to please God if you don't seek after. Mm-hmm. You're pleasing when you seek after. And, and, and seeking, seeking after him. And, but, but, but why is it that, that he wants to be pleased when we, why is it to please him when we, when, he seek, when we seek after him? Because he's just like us. He loves that attention that we give him. Amen. When you do something for someone over and over and over, you pour it out. He's given us so much, and he's loved us so much. He's given his only son, and, and, and he wants you to show him some appreciation. He wants you to show him some love and some praise. He wants you to do something for him that's going to make him smile. Amen? He loves that attention. He loves it when we call on him first with our problems. Why we can't call on him first? He don't want no second-hand phone call. <laughs> He loves it when we call on him first. He loves it when we pray to him about our problems, and after we pray, we stop worrying about that problem. We have an altar call at our church. (laughs) So many times people will take their burdens to the Lord. (laughs) They're down on their knees. They're praying. They're crying. They're asking him, Lord, help me with this and help me with that. (laughs) But when they get up, they say, you know what, Lord, I'm going to take this on back to the seat with me. And I'm going to take this because I've been dealing with this. And I'm going to leave these right here. He said, no, if you can't leave it all, then take them all back with you. We need to leave our burdens at the altar. But understand that faith, faith pleases God. Can you imagine, if you will, that you've sacrificed all your life for your child? You've sent him to college. You've, You've not bought things that you wanted to buy. And you sent him, and, and the day that he walks across that stage, he gets to that microphone, and he thanks the professors. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he thanks all the teachers. He thanks everybody but you. Mm-hmm. But you're the one that sacrificed. Don't you know that it's a hurting thing? Mm-hmm. That's a hurting, and that's how it is when, when we don't give God the glory that he deserves. Amen, amen. That's, good. that's when we don't put our whole life on the line for that's him. Good. We don't please him when we don't go out and witness. We don't please him when we don't sacrifice our lives and our body. He died that we might have life, but not just any old kind of life. An abundant life. You know what abundant means? Abundant means you got enough for you, and you got enough to give somebody else some. Overflowing. If you short patience and you lose patience with people, they get on your nerve. Mm-hmm. That means you don't have enough patience for you and them. That's Pray for some more. That's <laughs> You ever been around folks? They, they, you see them coming and they're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> they, ain't, they ain't even done nothing to you. <laughs> you just hate to see them coming. That's wrong. Yes. You need to pray for some patience. Yes. Yes. You saying, yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. Now look, believing that God exists is not enough. We, we have this faith that equals a trust. Believe in God. It's just not enough because James tells us that the devils in hell, they, they believe and they do what? They tremble. We have to take our belief to another height. We have to take our belief to faith and hope and trust, leaning and depending on him. Now, now uh, most of us know what faith is, and, and we can wake us, wake us up in the morning out of a deep sleep and ask us what faith is, and we'll recite that faith is something they hope. You know, we'll do all that. But how many of us really know how to activate our faith? When you go to the store, and I use, like to use analogies, when you go to the store and you buy an item, say you're buying a toy for your kids, yes. you pick yes. up that item and it says battery needed, but there are no batteries included. <laughs> you, I'm going to put that toy down. <laughs> and I'm going to go find a toy that says battery needed and battery included. Because <laughs> there's so many different kind of batteries out there. Why do I need to go hunt for batteries when you already know what kind of battery? <laughs> and so it is. And then once, once you get the battery and you put it in the, in, the, in the toy, the toy still doesn't have any power to move and to work. You have to do what? You have to turn on the switch. Mm-hmm. There's an on switch. Mm-hmm. And all of us in here, we have a measure of faith. Yes. Because it took that faith for you to accept Christ. Yeah. It took that little mustard seed faith in order for you to believe. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. But that faith needs to be flipped on. Yes. Yes. And I'm going to tell you that the, 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 the faith formula, the flip on that faith, how do you activate that faith? Is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Mm. All right. That's the faith formula. If you don't get nothing else from what I say right. here today, understand how to flip on your faith, how to activate your faith. And it's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And it says what? Trust, Trust in, in the, the Lord. Lord with a little bit of your heart. Oh, yeah. <laughs> with all? Oh. All of it? Oh, 
And lean not unto your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge him. And he's going to do what? Direct your path. When you acknowledge him, I don't care if it's a little thing or a big thing. When you acknowledge him about that, he will direct your path. Whatever it is, you need to acknowledge him. That is your faith formula that's going to activate the faith that you have on the inside of you. And whenever you activate that faith, you increase that faith. Yes, yes. Make sense? Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. A woman of faith will diligently seek him. A woman who's diligently seeking God anywhere and everywhere will draw closer to him. Yes. And you know how she draws closer to him? Through her pain, through her trials, and her tribulations. And she grows closer to him through her victories. Because he promised never to leave you. Yes. Now when the enemy, now the enemy's gonna come now. If you if he know he know how to spot a woman of faith, he's gonna come and he's gonna try to disrupt you because he does not want you to please God. Mm. Right. That's his that and we can't get mad at the devil. Because that's what he was created to do. He's just doing his job. <laughs> he's just doing his job. But you need to do your job better than him. All right. Amen? Amen? And when the enemy tries to destroy your mind, he begins to, to put some doubt about God in you. Jesus will do for you what he did for Thomas. Remember when Thomas was struggling with his doubt yeah. about Jesus? Jesus will come to you and say, stop doubting and just believe me. When the devil tries to tempt you, let God determine your circumstance. Don't let your circumstance determine your God. You need to let your God determine your circumstance. Don't have any doubt. You believe that he will do what he says he'll do. Don't give in to your circumstance and your problems. He's bigger than that. But you got to believe that. Yes, you got to believe that yes, it's all about belief and attitude yes, it is. faith is about belief and attitude yes. when you kneel down on your knees to pray it's yes. about faith yes. and belief and attitude yes. if you get down there saying God I've been down here 99 yes, times and yes, you ain't yes, answered yes. me yet yes. I don't even know why I'm praying because I know you ain't going to answer me but Ooh. I'm going down here. your prayer is already bouncing off the wall you need to pray with a sincere heart. Yes, you Lord. need to imagine in your yes, mind that what you're praying yes, for is Lord. already there. Yes, Lord. Having faith is seeing stuff that's not even there yes, already. Yes, Figure it out in your mind that it's already there. Yes, mm -hmm. Lord. Amen. Women of faith found themselves living in fear. They'll take a note from David when he said, I sought the Lord and he answered me and he delivered me from all my fear. You need to understand that fear is not the absence of faith. Yes. You still have faith when you're free and when you're afraid. It's just that you misplace your faith. The devil doesn't want to rob you of your faith. He just wants you to put it in. He just wants the object of your faith to be something else other than God. Make sense? You still got faith, but it's not in God. It's in alcohol. It's in drugs. It's in various different multiple beds hopping. You're trying to, you're trying to find, you're trying to find what, what faith is going to do. That faith in God. He doesn't want you to have faith in God. He wants you to try to seek it somewhere else. That's good. Yeah. That's good. So if you feel fear coming on, you know that's a trick of the devil. Mm -hmm. God has not given you that. Mm -hmm. He hasn't given you that. He that's gave right. you a sound mind. Mm -hmm. So you can think. He gave you love. Yeah, that's good. Yes, baby. Don't take it. God didn't give you that fear, so don't take it. Make sense? Amen. 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 Women of faith will not allow the enemy to make them feel insecure. The enemy will try to make you feel unloved. You ain't good enough. Your hair too short. It's too nappy. Your skin too dark. Your lips too big. <laughs> you got too much of that. You got too little of that. Insecure. <clears throat> but you need to understand that God loves you. He says you're enough. You're more than enough. You're more than a conqueror. Yes. Hallelujah. Don't take it. Yes. Women of faith will say, get thee behind me, Satan. Come on. Because they know that I am fearfully. You know you're fearfully and you're wonderfully made. Yes. 139 Psalms and 14 says, I am fearfully and I'm wonderfully made. Yes. Every part of me, he made every part of me. You look like you look because he, when he thought about you in his heart and he fashioned and designed you, he knew the purpose that he had for your life. So he gave you what he gave you. Look, I, I, I go to the Richmond Rescue Mission every now and then, and I speak to them. Now, I can't look like Halle Berry going to the Richmond Rescue Mission. Because they're going to be looking at her and not listening to what I'm saying. Because exactly. All right. All right. that's what Halle Berry does. Now, Halle got some places that she might go. And she might not distract people. But if I look like Halle, and I ain't saying I want to look like her. But if 